Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing a movie review. This movie is a horror film from the United States, English language, released in the year 2016, directed by Feta Alvarez, and this film is called Don't Breathe. So Don't Breathe is set in Detroit. You've got these three burglars who are sick of their living conditions, and they they rich uh, they rob rich people's homes in order to get the funds in order to make a better life for themselves in California. So they're not really making the ends meet, and they're getting very frustrated, but that frustration appears to have been put to an end when they come across an easy target. Basically, there is a blind man who has an inheritance of $300,000. Now he lives in a very reclusive neighborhood, he's by himself, and so he just, it feels like this is uh, the, an opportunity to make their dreams a reality. So they stake out his environment, they stake out his routine, and this is on a particular evening, they go in and they break into his house, but this is where they realize that there is more to this old guy than they first thought, and they're going to regret the decision of setting foot in his home. So what happens at that point on is something you're going to have to find out for yourself, because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Don't Breathe. This is one of my most anticipated horror films of 2016 for two very good reasons. Number one, Feta Alvarez was the director. He made the brilliant Evil Dead remake. And number two, everybody is praising this movie to no end. So I know better than to base my expectations on what other people think of the film, but it's very hard to ignore, especially when it comes to a horror movie. And after seeing this movie, I will say that although it didn't reach the expectations I was hoping it would, it was still a fantastic horror film, and it's a horror movie that I think needs to be encouraged because Feta Alvarez makes horror movies for the right reasons. He actually makes them because he loves horror and it's the secondary sort of the secondary motivation for making this film is for the money whereas in a lot of other films the, the primary focus is to make money therefore they don't really concentrate on the minor details and they're flogging a dead cash cow basically recycling things that have been done before but when you've got a director who loves horror you feel as though they're really putting time and attention to the minor details and those minor details they basically they snowball effect into something so much bigger and now I thought that this movie because of all the minor details were done so perfectly well it actually strikes you with something very creative and it's very much a lost art because this movie relies on its tension it relies on its Alfred Hitchcock sense of suspense it's not about the confrontation it's about the lead up to that confrontation and how you know, um, edge of your seat it can actually be and so the biggest uh, part of this film that makes it work so well is that it does have minor details to the sound and also the characters now the sound is used to a point where you actually feel it's a movie based on the sense of sound in that you've got this character who is blind and that all he can do is hear and so the hearing is magnified to a point where you actually feel like you're going through his shoes and it was very reminiscent of the qualities of Hush which is another horror film that was based on the sense of sight where she couldn't actually hear anything but she could see so the overall visuals played a strong storytelling whereas in this movie the sound plays a strong storytelling the sound is the element focus of this film and the sound was absolutely perfect in this movie there were scenes in this film that actually had me on the edge of my seat and there were moments that were completely silent and you felt that this guy could hear their breathing so you as a viewer were holding your breath as well and so Don't Breathe is appropriately titled because it's exactly what happens to the viewer and I think that for the viewer to experience this it's because of these minor details that have been paid attention to and as I said minor details are not really paid attention to by many directors because they feel it's not very important but if you do put time and effort into the minor aspects of a film it can snowball into something so much much bigger and that's exactly what happens to Don't Breathe. Another tiny element that is paid attention to is the characters and the characters limitations of stupidity. Now a lot of films out there you feel very frustrated because they're putting themselves in harm's way. Because they're putting themselves in harm's way, you don't care what happens to them. But Feta Alvarez has gone out of his way to limit the op uh, the opportunities for stupidity. And therefore, you can actually gain sympathy for these people because it feels like very realistic betrayal of people who are actually trying to escape as opposed to actually putting themselves into a situation for the sole focus of the progression of the film. But because Feta Alvarez has put him into an environment, put him into a situation where they can't escape, you feel as though, okay, this is something that I would do myself. And that gives it a a lot more scariness and so those tiny aspects are something that I would really appreciate and it's aspects that a lot of people might not really pay attention to but I really got that and I felt as though this is a movie that was made out of a lot of respect so the acting was fantastic Stephen Lang who plays the bad guy was absolutely phenomenal this is a guy that actually felt like although he was the bad guy he had a lot of victim quality in him as well so and that was the case with the burglars you've got these burglars who you feel as though they're doing the wrong thing but the situation has caused them to do this. You know, their poor environment that they've been raised in has caused them to do this. Although you're not condoning it, you don't necessarily feel as though there's one standout villain and one standout good guy. You feel like these are shady people that have been uh, molded due to their circumstances and due to their upbringing. So, 
I really felt that it was an added depth that the movie has. Although it does have a very simplistic sort of storyline, it had a lot of depth in it, and I thought that the movie, although the movie has depth in its character development, it has depth in the way that the story unfolds, it never loses sight of what it wants to be. It wants to be an entertaining film, and it never really feels as though it's getting bogged down with something that it's not. And so it's very self-aware, and Feder Alvarez has just added a few little bonuses that help contribute something that you haven't seen before. So it feels very unique within a very tight subgenre of the, the home invasion. So the production levels were through the roof. As I said, the sound is the biggest focus, but there were some camera angles that were absolutely superb, especially in the scene where all the lights go out. I thought the way that was used was just great, and it just has the hairs on your, at the back of your neck stand up. And I just, as I said, it's that anticipation of the, the confrontation that just has you... you know, panicking it just it feels as though it's unbearable and it's done to a point where I just felt okay I've watched a film that doesn't come along very often so the overall continuity was fantastic and all in all it was just a horror film that is very memorable but unfortunately for me it's the last quarter of the film that really hurts it because I felt it was very disjointed and it didn't really know how to finish itself off there was about two or three endings where I thought it could have tied up loose ends and that would have been it but because it's stop start stop start and you don't know exactly where it's going to finish you feel as though that sort of disjointed clunkiness that the movie has in the last quarter kind of feels very different from the very fluent sort of progression that the film had in the first three quarters so you feel as though it's not quite as suspenseful as the, the, the majority of the film was therefore it becomes a little bit of a, a distraction and therefore it becomes a disappointment but having said that it does it's not enough to really derail the film unfortunately a lot of horror films fail to really capitalize on an ending and so this is definitely the case of not really utilizing the great sort of tension in the platform that it built and because of the ending is a little bit disjointed it does prevent it from being the masterpiece that a lot of people say it is but having said that I'm still going to give Don't Breathe four stars go out there and see it, it is very good. Alright guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time you watch your movies and I'll see you later. Bye.